Well, it's week three of Pi 26 Ways, and for today we're going to be tackling the video game console that single-handedly saved the home video game market back in the 90s, the Nintendo Entertainment System. Let's jump right to it. The Nintendo Entertainment System, or NES as it's more commonly referred to, is by far the most iconic video game console of my youth. It came along after the video game market crash at a time when people weren't all that interested in having video game consoles in their living room anymore. This was thanks, at least in part, to a bunch of terrible game releases on the Atari 2600, such as the infamous E.T. and Pac-Man fiascos. The Nintendo changed that. Looking nothing like consoles before and more closely resembling a VCR, it brought quality gameplay back to the masses and ended up being a huge hit. To this day, the console enjoys huge popularity and has become a target for video game collectors everywhere. To model my NES Pi case, I first started by pulling out the measurements of the original console and then scaling them to fit a Pi. From there, I took pictures of the front of the console and used those pictures to make sure that my lines matched up as close to the originals as possible. Then I modified the design to allow for all the ports to be accessible, including using the recess method I used for power audio and video jacks on the Dreamcast. As an added bonus, this puts video relatively similar to where it was on the original console. Neat! With the design work finished, I sent it to my Prusa Mark IIIs and it was time to get to assembly. Well, unlike our previous builds, there's going to be a little bit of assembly work to be done to the case because, well, the NES is made up of quite a few colors. So we have our top and bottom, we have our front black strip and our rear black strip, and we have the switches. So we'll start off by mounting the black paneling on the actual top of the case. So you can just fit the black pieces in where they're supposed to be and then I've included a hole in the bottom where we can then just take a little bit of hot glue and then let that set up and that should hold it just fine. Now be careful when gluing not to put too much glue because this is most likely PLA for you and the plastic will deform with the heat of the glue. So I just put enough to fill in the little hole and then I'm not putting too much pressure on the top because I don't want to accidentally push on the plastic and deform it and repeat the process for the front one. Now, of course, for this, you can use any glue you want, be it uh, crazy glue or some 3D glue, or you could even use your 3D printing pen and uh, just fill in the inside with a little bit of PLA and that would hold it just as well. I'm using hot glue because it's what I had on hand. Finally, we'll go ahead and glue our switches into place. So they just drop in and then a little bit of hot glue just to hold them in place. And now it's time to turn our case into a functional Pi. So for that, we're gonna need a 30 millimeter five volt fan, your Raspberry Pi of your choosing. This is the Pi 3B plus, but there's also a version of the case for the four. Uh, to secure the fan, we're gonna need some M3 10 millimeter bolts. To secure the Pi, we're gonna need some M2.5 six millimeter bolts. And then to close up the case, we'll need some M2 eight millimeter bolts. You can go longer than this. It'll take all the way up to like a 12 or even a 16. Um, but eight millimeters should be more than enough. So the first thing we're gonna do is install our fan. So the fan mounts into the venting holes on the top here. It's not directly over the processor, but it should get enough airflow over top of it. And it keeps the aesthetic of the case proper by not having to create an additional grill. So go ahead and line up the fan over the mounting holes and then using our M3 10 millimeter bolts, we'll go ahead and secure it to the inside of the case. With our fan installed, we can go ahead and get the Pi mounted next. So essentially what you're gonna do is line up the ports with the back of the case and you're gonna be able to push it in and you may have to flex the plastic just to get it past this analog port. And the case, it's properly installed when the ports line up and snap into place. Just like that. Next, we'll use our M2.5 six millimeter bolts to secure the Pi in place. With our Pi installed, the next thing we'll do is make sure that the external holes for screen the case together are clear. Go ahead and push your hex wrench or whatever you've got that'll fit the hole through. Next, we'll install our fan. So again, we're going to the five volt, which is the top left and the ground, which is third from the left. And finally, we can close it up, being careful not to knock off the front panel, which should line up just perfectly when closed. And finally, we're going to install our M2.5 by eight millimeter bolts to close the case. And 
Now all that's left to do is install your SD card. And your Pi is ready to go. And here we have our finished Pi Ness, which I think turned out great. All the details are there, the angles are right, and side by side with the original console, it really does look the part. The details in terms of like even the same number of vents on the top as there was on the original console, uh, and then you know the concessions we had to make, like the recess section for the audio video, and uh, you know the USB and Ethernet being accessible on the back. And there's even enough room on the inside here that if somebody wanted to modify it, well, they could have functioning power and reset buttons right here in the front. So as always, this design is now available to my Patreon supporters, and it will be released on Thingiverse in the next uh, four weeks or so. You can follow me on there. I'm JC Print and Play on there, as well as on Instagram and Twitter, and obviously I'm Print and Play here on YouTube. So if you like this design, toss me a thumbs up. If you have an idea for a future design, let me know in the comments below. I'm still looking at those ideas and trying to fill out the 26 that I'm going to do. And make sure that you subscribe and click the bell so that you're notified whenever these new designs come out. Alrighty, well, as always, I've already got a head start on next week. I think you guys are going to love it. And uh, until then, stay creative. <laughs>